how David Bromley is not in the rock and roll band is one of life's great mysteries. He's a creative genius. He's iconic. He's everywhere. Everyone wants a Bromley. His work is just purely decorative. He just seems to have overproduced. Produce, produce, produce. And push and push and push till he actually falls in a heap. Standing still is not an option. Welcome back to Smoke and Mirrors. Today we have a special presentation. We're talking to the Sean McDonald, one of our very own homegrown Aussies from Melbourne, an ex-corporate worker from the marketing in industry, now full-time photographer. You may have seen his work either out on the field at music concerts or taking in the scenery elsewhere, providing us with beautiful shots of the world through his eyes, or maybe through his work with Catherine Fenella, Men's Muscle and Health, Dulux, and more recently, his work with David Bromley for Bromley Light After Dark. How are you feeling today, Sean? Ah, thanks for the awesome intro. I should take you everywhere with me. That was great. <laughs> well, I'm happy to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Personal hype man. I love it. <laughs> nah, thank you for that. Going very well. And yeah, it's funny hearing that kind of journey. Being in the corporate world feels like a long time ago and certainly um, a world I was not cut out for personality wise. <laughs> You know, I yep. can do the work of that, but I certainly, um, you know, was a bit too manic and high energy to be in an office all the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <In> my place. <laughs> <laughs> and we're happy for it. <laughs> exactly. Thank you. <laughs> Definitely. But no, so jumping with the questions, the first one I have for you, Sean, um, it's just what sparked the idea to get in touch with David and make a documentary about his life? Yeah, good question. I um, I'd sort of got... I've got to know David prior to sort of deciding to make this film. Um, I met him actually on a corporate job. He was doing a mural and I was sort of documenting the mural for the client. And we spent just a whole day on the, on this mural, you know, and instantly sort of got to know each other well and, and bonded. And that, after that, I started documenting some of his various wild, wacky projects. <laughs> and just over the course of, you know, I, I sort of did that for like two years, photographically more so than, than video. And yeah, we're just always having these really fascinating conversations about the meaning of life, of the wild journey he'd been on and all these, you know, and you try to retell some of these stories to people to sort of, you know, try and give them an insight. And it's really hard because, you know, he's such a fascinating, intense uh, and interesting character. So stupidly one night, I think it was about 1am and we were just, he was painting away and I was photographing. I'm like, someone needs to do a documentary on you because no one knows what you guys are really like. Like the perception out there is totally different. Um, and I said, oh, I should do it as a bit of a joke at the time. And he's like, go for it. So I thought, shit, what have I got myself into? I better figure out how to do that then. You know, I've sort of committed here. So yeah, then I, then I just thought, well, you know, I've got the access and I, I, um, I love documentaries um maybe i should just do it <laughs> that's how it yeah. all started that's awesome it's funny because you you talk about first meeting he was doing that mural and now it's almost like you made a mural about his life mm. so uh, very much <laughs> it's, the, it's true the and i like it's true and that i tried to approach a lot of the filmmaking process in similar ways to he creates his art in terms of not being bound by i guess traditional structures or formats and and just letting you know, just really playing and letting stories come out and letting interesting moments and scenes come out of not being too controlled by the way I went about it. And similarly with a lot of his art, I guess, you know, I tried to make the film something that on the surface or early in the film, you sort of jump to your own conclusions about what it is and then slowly sort of peel it back and show people, you know, a deeper sort of hopefully more meaningful story. But it's definitely, yeah, you channeled a bit of that creative process in the filmmaking. Nice. That's awesome. awesome. Um, so what, was there like an adjustment period getting into David's world? I mean, mm. when when I kind of seen it and I was like, okay, you got a studio and then you got a warehouse and then you got a backyard. And, oh shit, there's a steamroller. And then you throw kids and a wife in there and like motorbikes yeah. and all sorts of stuff. What, uh, the, what was that like? <laughs> it's, it's, it's the most beautiful thing about the film and the most challenging part is is david's character and the way they live and work you know i spent the first couple of months thinking i could control all these different things and i'll you know direct this and this is how i'll get all these things and very quickly i sort of had to get out of my own way and realize that one you can't control david even if you want to so it's like you're pointless <laughs> trying you know you may as well just 
let him go, you know. And but also that's where the magic comes from, right? Like, you know, I come from a photographic background and particularly love portraits and that. And it's a really similar thing in that if you go in with a really precise like image in your head of what you think that shot will be, you limit yeah. yourself. And 99 times out of 100, the shot that you walk away with from a portrait session is totally different to what you planned. So you've got to allow yourself to go there. And I sort of definitely channeled that from a filmmaking point of view is like, okay, let's strip back a lot of the, what can slow you down and be cumbersome from a filmmaking point of view, like big teams, lights and all those kind of things. And just be as yep. fly on the wall as possible because yep. yeah, I would go with, and there'd be days where you're like, okay, I'd like to do this today. Or I'd love to pick his brain about this subject matter. And you'll go in some other wild journey that will end up being 10 times more interesting and open doors to the, you know, little plots or ideas that you never would have otherwise, you know, found. And so I, yep. yeah, it's one of the things from a filmmaking point of view, um, most like I think was the best decision I did was getting out of my own way as a director and not trying to control everything. Obviously I have to pick my moments and you always have in the back of your mind what's missing in the story or where you need to dig deeper so that if there is a moment where David's quieter or, you know, at the end of the day, he's just painting alone, there's less distractions. You can sort of get into some of those things, but yeah, it was like, I would drive home so exhausted after every day like because yep. they would often <laughs> end up, you know, you'd swing by for an hour and you'd be there for 14 hours and you'd drive. Wow. Home and just <laughs> wow. be like, <laughs> That was equally the best and the worst day of my life. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You can see why he has to just sort of drop down and sleep for a couple of hours and then get back into it, eh? Yeah. The amount he's of energy. Like, he's like a battery. It just, he goes until it stops and then it's out while it recharges and then it goes again. But there's always full pelt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like he's twice my age and it was like tough to keep up with him from an energy point of view. <laughs> wow <laughs> that's insane that's yeah. so cool though so yeah. with the with this art as well like i feel like it can be translated universally across all forms of art now do you feel like after spending those days with david and having that sort of go with the flow method shortly after has it changed the way you create for everything else after that too or yeah absolutely like i think you know everyone has their own perception about david as an artist but what I having spent a lot a lot amount of time with him, I would say he's one of the greatest creatives Australia's ever had. Not just art, because his his world it is so beyond just paintings in terms of his creativity. And mm -hmm. what's so great about it is like, and I don't mean the outcome because like everyone can focus on the outcome of, of a creative process, but nine times out of ten that's subjective and it doesn't really matter anyway. But what I learned from him was just that everything's possible if you believe it and yeah, yeah. you know that that you know like one of the sayings that it never made the final film but it was in a scene that we never cut but he's like i learned early on that no one was going to give me permission to be a painter no one comes and says like you're going to be the next great painter and he or you know in that scene he was referencing angus young he's like no one came to him and said you're going to be a great guitarist you've got to like give yourself permission to do that and be that person so I sort of channeled a lot of that and to, which and still do in everything that I that I do is that like one, you've got to back yourself and just have a bit of blind faith that you'll if you care enough and are determined yep. enough, you'll figure it out if it's something you haven't done. And so I channel a lot of that with my creativity, but also just like just never stop doing it and keep trying everything. And you know, not everything has to land, you know. Sometimes yep. you'll you'll do three bad ideas or you know, before you get to the good one. And so learning to embrace failure is is probably one of the greatest lessons I've got from him for sure. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, I feel like um like Rob and I and our other brother Dave, who was on the podcast with us, we do that a lot. Where it's like we embrace the failures and then we just keep uh, innovating from there as well. Because you really like fine tune your product moving forward, and if you keep doing that, like it just keeps getting better. Absolutely, and you learn what you like more, what makes you excited the more you don't get excited about something or something doesn't work out you're like okay well that just adds fuel to the next attempt to to nail something you know what i mean and like yeah. you said it's like you, in some ways you let if you let go of the fear of failure because you understand that it's probably going to just lead you somewhere good anyway then you know all those barriers lift and you're just creating freely which is a beautiful place to be definitely yeah 
Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. Um, but I, I guess just staying in that perspective bag, you, when you, when you started, you were saying, how am I even going to do this? Where are you at now in terms of I've gone through the fire of like, I've walked the path, I've put this thing together and I've put it out. Like, what is that like, like in hindsight now? Yeah. It's like, it's a good description of it walking through the fire. Cause you certainly get burnt a lot along the way and maybe there's yeah. some, <laughs> some, some burn scars to show for it, but <laughs> it like is awesome. It's like, a project like this is a bit of a roller coaster because you just like some days you're like it's going awesome and then the next day you're like oh, what am i doing and like is this even yep. going to get out to the world like am i going to just spend four years and this will just like be uploaded on youtube or you know and never yep. get seen or like is, will there be an audience so you've got to manage that side of things but certainly at this point getting out and like you know we've we've, we've done a film festival circuit so we've got to like tested out with audiences and that and the feedback's been incredible um yeah it's certainly satisfying but at the same time like getting back to what i learned from david is to not really give a fuck about that shit like yeah, fun, yeah. you know the the four years of filming was just incredibly fun and like yep. even this you know we spent six months editing this thing and i got to work with this brilliant editor that was so much fun because you're just throwing creative ideas around each day working on things developing it pushing it fine tuning it you know like almost you know i i've, I've learned to appreciate the process which is what david also does as well and not stress the end result you know obviously in, when you're in the process you're doing every little thing you can to make the end result good but once yeah. you get to that process like you're just more excited to get back into the creating process so i've certainly learned that side of things over this journey but yeah i feel like i've sort of been to film school and come out the other side yeah film to show from it and still you know <laughs> somewhat sane and you know have learned a truckload along the way that going forward and making more films will put me in amazing you know a much better position yeah a hundred percent and i've got to say this film it doesn't doesn't focus on the end result and then people's perceptions of that end result, it takes you deep into the process, which is like, it's amazing to see that, to see all the little things like throwing the stones on the painting and then steamrolling it, or just like cracking open a can of spray paint and going crazy. Um, but it, and also those little moments where he's sort of spray painting his shoes, just to renew them. It's just like that as a, as a character piece is amazing. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Cause the, like those little shoe bits, like I remember we, we put them in throughout the film and sprinkled them in and like, they're kind of a little metaphor, metaphoric for just like starting again. It's a new day, you've got a new challenge, yeah. you've got a new, you know, battle to face. And so it's really nice that like people always love that and talk about it after the film. And so it's like, it's great from a editing sort of filmmaking process when those little moments connect, but like, that's what it's all about and that's what i love about david as an artist is like it's kind of like life right if you're always focused on the end result you're going to miss the journey which is 90 percent of it so yep. you may as well have fun with the process because who knows what the outcome is going to be but if you if you enjoy the process and like cherish every bit of that then you can't lose like you know uh -huh. the creative or in life or, or whatever and that's another great lesson i got from them but like they yeah and like, you know, that obviously a huge part of the film is, is on, you know, David's mental health and how he manages that. And, you know, that's a big part of that is like showing, yeah, you can have a lot of stuff going on in your head and, and life can sort of beat you down at times. But if you're finding ways to just put, you know, happiness and joy into every day, you can overcome those things. So that yep. was really important to show in the film as well. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. It's actually like a perfect segue as well, considering like um, putting David's mental health on show in this documentary. Um, did that come naturally organically or did you feel like um, it was just something you added shortly after getting to know him? Yeah. Like one thing about David is like, he's very open with talking about that sort of stuff. And so straight away, you know, I learned, you know, and I'm someone who likes to then talk back about that kind of stuff. So we were always having these heavy conversations that, um i knew it had to be part of the film because and like i thought you know this would be a great little subplot to you know his mental health journey but very quickly as i started the process i realized that everything he does 
in life is based around managing that. So it became very quickly the heart of the film and also the story that you want to tell, right? Like I want to mm. tell, tell stories that are stories of hope and, and overcoming yep. and things that make you feel good when you walk out of the cinema and make you feel like, you know, you can take on the next day in a bigger way. And that's really hard to do around mental health because it's often, yep. you know, heavy and, and it can bring you down. But what he does so magnificently is find his way through that and use it. You know, he often refers to it as his superpower. So he uses it yep. to supercharge his life. And, and, and as hard as his brain's going to hit him, he's going to hit back even harder to make yep. sure that day is magical and that his life is as good as it can be. So I really wanted to make sure that that came across in the film. And I like, because mm. there were like the other, you know, misconception I sort of wanted to address is that people that suffer from anxiety or phobias or, depression that they're these unhappy people it was david's yep. one of the happiest people i've ever come across in life no one loves life more than him and so and yeah that comes with the downside of like your brain always being on and always feeling every feeling you know really intently um yep. but also like that doesn't mean life can't be magical and beautiful and can't be full of happiness and, and that's really important i think to get out as a, as a key message of the film yeah for me when he was speaking about you know recounting walking on the beach with his friend he's like i don't know how to explain to my friend that i just want to run and jump into the water like there's parts in this movie where you relate so hard to david mm -hmm. and like it took me on this emotional journey throughout the documentary as well and you, you feel um basically vindicated at the end of this as well that yeah like you said you can have mental health but you can still be like happy and move forward and use that as well absolutely it's a great observation and that's one of, like that's one of my favorite sort of parts of the film because it's so hard to explain to people that perhaps haven't experienced anxiety or similar things what that is right you, you can only make them feel it and it's really hard to so like that's why we went with that sort of beautiful animation scene using david's words talking about it because you know, and you've got to remember when David first really fell into the depths of these things, you know, it's in a time where we didn't talk about mental health. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. You yeah. were you were shut down hard if you did. And if you talked about it, you were seen as crazy. And so, like, uh -huh. I just can't even imagine what the loneliness he must have felt not knowing what this thing is. And I think that is a moment in the film where you really connect, like, how do you tell your mate? You've got yeah. something going on when you don't even know what it is. You know, yeah, just that as a simple concept. At least now we've got terms for it. We talk about it more. We can identify it. It helps people a lot. But now we need to take that next next step of, of just understanding it on a whole deeper level. But yeah, you're 100 right. Like one of the great things we've had so far is just talking to people after the screenings that we've had, and like exactly what you said. People come out saying, "I feel un I understand myself better," or "I feel like." My son who suffers from anxiety, like I know more about what he's feeling. Or we've had lots of just like really emotional people coming out crying and talking to us about someone in their life that's struggled or yeah. suffered similar things. And they're a bit they're just like, I I just want to call them now and like mm. tell them, you know, yep. all these things. So from a filmmaker's point of view, you're like, oh, that's like you know so heartwarming that you're connecting and that you're helping people understand this challenge yeah yeah definitely. yeah 100 percent. I, I love that it wasn't about perfection mm. like your your life doesn't have to be perfect it's going to be sort of like all over the place and that is okay that is your journey um but speaking of like just juggling things in life you juggled quite a lot of this movie you were the the director executive producer and you were the director of photography which we see at the end you're like flying back tripping over a couch <laughs> so thank you for including that um <laughs> did did you how did it feel wearing that many hats but also did it clash with you at all going through the process 100 mm, percent. it's like one of those things that it's like it has pros and it has cons and sometimes you're always sort of in the middle as to which one's outweighing the other you know, the pro is like, you know, I always I could be more intimate just being me with a camera and I could be more immersed in the world. But then it's also just like the realities of being a first time director and you don't get 
money, big budgets up front to make a film. So you've got to sort of make the film and prove you've made a good film before anyone will give you any money. So, um, you know, and I also wanted the film to be something where I immersed for a long period of time to really let the story unfold. So um, the only way I was really going to do that was by wearing lots of hats myself you know, at least yeah. for the first large part of the film. But, you know, I, you know, it it comes with it. And that's where I get back to saying you got to let go of something. So some of those examples of letting go might be like you're not always in the perfect lighting situation or you're not, you know, there's things around you that are distracting or, but, you know, that's just where the moment's happening. So you've got to embrace it. And being one man with a camera and directing as well, you're just able to be in that moment all the time. You're never like distracted by someone else. And like, so I really love that side of sort of small team filmmaking is that you're so much more intimate and like, they don't notice you're there. Like, whereas if you've got a bigger crew, um, it's a different dynamic and it's a different, you know, relationship. So it was certainly hard though. Like, you know, you're just exhausted all the time because you're doing all these different things and then you're trying to edit footage before you've got like funding to get an editor on board so you're trying to piece together things and then you're like I'm just all I'm doing is living in this world <laughs> like, which is great but also it's setting me slightly mad um but that's I don't know how else the film could have been made you know? yeah yeah and, and like the journey that you guys go through I mean it showcases also the 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 massive sort of void and spiral that you can sort of go into, but also that David has this massive capacity for loving as well. Mm. Like him, his family, that life was just, it's, it's amazing to see something integrated, like especially with your passion to have your passion integrated with your family is it's nuts. It's almost like a dream scenario. Yeah. You know what oh, I mean? 100%. And like, that's what I kind of love also about the film is that, yeah, I wanted to tell this story that would help, maybe some people that were in similar positions to David at, at some point and struggling with life and to, to find a bit of hope. But also I wanted it to be a story beyond like a wider story that, you know, it doesn't matter if you're experiencing any of that stuff. Everyone can look at life and imagine, you know, and take a little bit of David's approach to life mm. that will make your life better. And it's just like not settling for anything other than what, makes you really happy on a day-to-day basis i think we all sometimes settle for certain things ah this is just the way my life is or whatever it is but he will not settle for any of that and so i think that's such a broad you know message that everyone can walk away with that you know life can be more if you if you want it to be yeah yeah for sure look um another one i had for you was so i'm gonna be a hundred percent honest i'm not like an art person i'm very basic when it comes to it um you give a great breakdown of david's art in here and the way he creates um but i was surprised that a lot of critics and people you interviewed um it was a very mixed response to his art were you surprised with that as well not really because i had got to know his position in the art scene through spending a bit of time with him and you would just go out and talk with people and like I would always be posting photos of stuff I was doing with David and you'd get mixed responses from everyone going, oh, David Bromley, he's just like this or that. And then other people going, I love his work. And you're like, they're polar opposite, you know, where's the truth kind of somewhere in the middle or or is it, are they both true? And they're probably both true because art is subjective and everyone's going to relate to it in different ways. But um, in getting back to your question, I think, yeah, like you don't have to be, and I love it to enjoy the film. Like it, it, it's not so much about that, but in terms of the critics and those kind of things, I definitely wanted to show because I knew there was a lot of those in society, like in a lot of those. So I wanted to represent, because it is an interesting discussion. You know, why is art polarizing? You know, why, like it could be the same with films or, um, you know, yep. photos, whatever. But when something's polarizing, visually and people have these really strong opinions it's like they're all valid and so let's yeah. let's break down what's driving them and yep. then i think if you understand that or you get to see all the different opinions that are out there mm-hmm. and you're presented with them all as an audience you can then start trying to make your own decision right and then True. hopefully as we unpack the film that will help inform your decision on okay well what's driving this why you know 
because on the surface you might see pictures of a butterfly and just think there's nothing much to that but then as yeah. you break down david's life and what goes into him creating those butterflies you see them differently um mm. so i thought it was really important to show the critics because that exists you know like i wanted to tell the real story of of who these guys are both day to day but also like okay well where do they sit in the art scene i think there's there's, there's lessons from that as well from a wider perspective like even just like human to human we all judge people by their cover we all see something and matt and assume we know the artist's intention or who that person is and i think the more we can all learn to step back and understand maybe what's behind the book cover we're all going to be better for it and that's the same with mental health like you know you can look at someone and not know what's going on so the more we all learn you know in life to to dig behind what's on the surface then we're going to be better off for it. Yeah, yeah definitely and you're definitely right because at the end of this film you really begin to appreciate well i began to appreciate david's art more like mm. even when he was setting up the um was it castle main jail when he was setting up the yeah. museum there that yeah. was gorgeous at the end of this and even the setup and effort put into that i was loving every second <laughs> oh man it's incredible what they've done there and freaking draining trying to cover that footage like those days were so long and hard and it was always hot and like you're in this hot jail and it was like I'd just be racing around, he'd be outside with a chainsaw, then inside putting a sculpture <laughs> in. It's like I would just nearly be like wrecked for three days after every shoot. <laughs> and he would just keep going doing it. And I'm like, no, surely it's done. But um yeah, like the jail is so like it, the jail's now open to the public, which is amazing. And we've got a screening down there, I think the 25th of November, which would be beautiful. So everyone who goes yeah. to the screening at the Casamania Theatre will we'll have a entry ticket to an after party at the jail you'd be able to walk around explore that and it's just like and the jail is another great example of like just what his art is is is, is, mm. is trying to like build something beautiful in a place that was once really ugly like and that mm. was what appealed to him at the start of that project is like yeah let's fill this place that was probably filled with people like me and yep. make it something beautiful and artistic and, and and give something to the community that is uplifting and joyful and happy and and so that was like yeah an incredible process to see the transformation of that place it's nuts it's so good yeah 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 um but I, I probably almost broke them both in half <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, mentally, man, I... mentally physically financially in every way <laughs> shape or form. but you know that's just a testament to their commitment you know to their yeah but also their partnership as well like they mm. They, they, they just work so well together. And that's the only way that you would be able to pull something like that off. Like, I, I don't think you could walk into that jail by yourself, know exactly what you're going to do without those different sort of influences. Eh? Um, it's, 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 it's just wild watching them work together. Like there's not many, I couldn't imagine many couples being out and just work so closely, so intently yeah. all the time while having kids hanging off them. You know, like yep. the first night they got the jail, I was in there with them. And you see a few snippets of it in the credits, but like they slept over in the jail that night. It was just an empty oh, wow. jail with their three little kids. <laughs> you know, there's still a noose hanging in the corner. Like, and it's like, wow. you know, that's that's an unusual lifestyle, you know. Like, but yep. the kids are like, all right, we'll sleep here tonight. And, like, <laughs> and so it's literally all hands on deck all the time. So, yeah. Yep. For them to bounce, like Yugi is just a superwoman and everyone who meets Yugi is just like in awe of her brilliance. And like as a creative, like often people look at Dave and, and Yugi and think, oh, Yugi's kind of like the business person behind. And she's a great business person, but she is just goes toe to toe with Dave from a creative perspective and is such yep. an incredible balance of like business intelligence, but creative genius yep. slash with like, a beautiful, emotional, understanding, caring person, and a great mother, and you, all those things at once, and you're just like, "Whoa, that's incredible. yeah." So yeah, yeah. It, it, it's incredible watching them work together. Yeah, a hundred percent. Um, and I mean, going through the journey, you shot this for four years. Is that right, Sean? Four yeah. years. How much is sitting on the cutting room floor right now? <laughs> so much. Like <laughs> even like. Even scenes that made it, like I'm trying to think of a good example, but there's, you know, like the scene where David's sitting on top of the car 
talking about his, his his mental health challenges over the which probably goes for two and a half minutes in the film. That was just a spontaneous like one hour debrief of all this stuff that has happened in his life, and the whole hour is interesting, right? Like, but yeah. you can't put that in the film. It's like there's so much, you know, more he goes into in that. You know, me and my editor are always joking, like, when do we get to do the five-hour director's cut? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, we need the just, McDonald cut. <laughs> yeah, deep dive into that stuff because, yeah, there's so much footage that's on it. And, like, even just things like, you know, I really wanted to put some scenes in there about his phobias and and, mm. and what they're like. And, you know, I'm sure you guys will remember that where he's talking about little stamps in there, and that's an example yep. of the phobias. But we probably had six of those scenes to choose from and you're like which scene is best you know and you probably they are all doing the same role from a film point of view and so you you can't sort of just put them in because they're all entertaining um and so there's things like that where you've got to choose which one best represents and what i love about that scene is like just his own acknowledgement of how farcical some of his phobias are and how it doesn't really matter what the, the thing you're you know freaked out by or what's giving you anxiety like because as he says in the film like the next day it'll just latch on to something new so like that scene i thought was really fun and 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 showed that side of things which i think is is an interesting um message but yeah there's certainly so much from the cutting room floor that you know was was magic and gold that we just couldn't get in (laughs) we'll wait for the extras on the dvd (laughs) exactly (laughs) Sean, thank you so much for your insights today. Um, just, just for me, my personal journey um, going into the movie it was so liberating to watch someone liberate themselves, essentially, mm-hmm. set in this world of just juxtapositions between love and despair. Um, so th- thank you for the movie and um, wish you all the best for it. Oh, thank you so much, guys. It's been awesome chatting with you and thanks for having me on and um, thanks for all the work you guys do in, in supporting films like ours and, and getting it out to your audience. Definitely. Always a pleasure. Now, with Bromley Light After Dark, it does come out on November 16th at your local cinemas. Please check it out as soon as possible. And Sean, just a quick one to it. Also love to promote the fundraiser that you have for the film at Documentary Australia. Um, Mm. If anyone listening or watching would love to support such a beautiful cause, you can reach the site in the links below this video when we release it as well. Oh, it's very kind of you. Thanks so much. Yeah, like even just getting a film like this funded is such a hard, strenuous process. It's yeah. probably equally as hard as making the film. And so all of those little donations made such a huge, huge difference because um, it's just not easy getting films made and funded you yeah. know, to get to a certain level where you need a film to get to be in a cinema and, and get to a wider audience. So, yeah, thank you yeah. for your guys' support and for, for sharing all of that. Thank no you. No problems at all. Hopefully we'll catch you at the cinemas. Oh, yeah, for sure. Thanks so much, guys. Thank Thank you. you. I don't want to be a painter of joy, but I don't just want it to come from darkness. I am scared I'm going to die if I jump straight in, which would be really freaking cool for the documentary. (laughs) 